Russell Frank Eberdome was an Australian rules footballer and coach. He is considered one of the greatest players in the history of Australian rules football in South Australia. Ebert is the only player to have won four Magri medals which are awarded to the best and fairest player in the South Australian National Football League. Ebert is one of four Australian rules footballers to have a statue at Adelaide Oval, the others being Ken Farmer, Malcolm Blight, and Barry Rogren. Football historian John Devaney described Ebert as coming as close as any player in history to exhibiting complete mastery over all the essential skills of the game. The fourth of six children of Doreen and Albert Ebert, Russell was born in the South Australian river town of Barrie. Russell's father Albert was a footballer with the Alawuna Football Club and captain coached the team to a premiership in 1953. Russell's family moved to Loxton during his high school years and the town was home to his junior football club, the Loxton Football Club where he played with his brothers. During his time at the Wakery Football Club, Ebert played alongside Bruce Light, who eventually played for Port Adelaide with him. In 1968 Eric Freeman, Port Adelaide's full forward, was selected to play for the Australian cricket team for the upcoming Ashes series. The absence of Freeman provided Ebert the opportunity, as an 18-year-old, to claim the full forward position in the team. Ebert made his debut in the first round of the 1968 Sample season against Glenelg on Albert and Oval. During that season Ebert kicked six goals in a game against both North Adelaide and Sturt. Ebert won Port Adelaide's leading goal kicker award in his debut season. He was also awarded the club's best first-year player award. During the 1970 sample season Ebert was selected for the South Australian state football team for the first time. In 1971 Ebert won his first Magri medal, awarded to the fairest and most brilliant player in the sample, along with Port Adelaide's best and fairest. For the 1974 sample season, he was appointed captain of the club and was again awarded both the Port Adelaide Best and Fairest along with a second Magri medal. In 1974 John Cahill took over as Port Adelaide coach from Foss Williams, and one of his first actions was to appoint Ebert as club captain. Ebert's first premiership as a player came in 1977 when Port Adelaide broke its 12-year drought defeating Glenelg at Football Park. Ebert kept only one Guernsey from his playing career, the one he wore in the 1977 Sanfil Grand Final. It has taken us a bloody long time but by gee it was worth it, Russell Ebert during the post-game award presentations of the 1977 Sanford Grand Final. Victorian Football League clubs chased Ebert for a decade until North Melbourne finally won his signature and he spent a season with. North Melbourne in 1979 Port Adelaide agreed to lease Ebert to North Melbourne for the 1979 season in exchange for Mark Dawson. As well as paying Ebert $35,000. During 1979 Ebert continued to operate his business, a sports store, in Adelaide. Ebert would fly to Melbourne for the Tuesday training session, fly back to Adelaide, work until the middle of Thursday, fly to Melbourne again, play for North Melbourne in the VFL, and fly back Saturday night. North Melbourne agreed to cover Ebert's large travel costs. I think he was the first fly-in-fly-out footballer because he came across from South Australia, Port Adelaide, and played just the one season. He flew in on a Thursday night and would fly home on a Sunday. Marvelous year at the club, played all 25 games, 15 goals, had the most possessions of anyone at the club in that time. Ross Glendinning describing Ebert's year at North Melbourne in 1979. Ebert's tally of 25 games for North Melbourne is the VFL-AFL record for the most games in a career which only lasted one season. During his season with North Melbourne Ebert would play alongside Malcolm Blight, Graham Corns, Keith Gregg, Ross Glendinning, Wayne Schimmelbush, Gary Dempsey, and Graham Melrose. Ebert would collect the most disposals of any North Melbourne player during 1979. North Melbourne finished second on the ladder and reached the preliminary final. Ebert returned to Port Adelaide as a player for the 1980 Sandville season. In a dominant season Port Adelaide would defeat Norwood in the 1980 Sandville Grand Final. Ebert would be awarded the inaugural Jack Odie Medal in recognition of being the best player afield during the 1981 Sanfil Grand Final. During that match Port Adelaide defeated Glenelg by 51 points. On October 15, 1982, upon the departure of John Cahill for Collingwood, Ebert was appointed captain coach of Port Adelaide for the 1983 Sanfil season. During the year Ebert also captained the South Australian side for the third time. On June 23, 1984 in a game against West Torrens at Football Park Ebert broke the Sanfil record for most games played in that competition surpassing Paul Bagshaw's tally of 360 games. 
In 1984 Port Adelaide reached its only grand final with Ebert as coach. In front of 50,271 spectators Port Adelaide relinquished a three-point lead at the final change of the 1984 Sanford Grand Final to eventually lose to Norwood by nine points. Ebert retired as a player at the end of 1985 where his 392 games remains a club record. Ebert's playing career spanned a total of 452 senior games for Port Adelaide, North Melbourne and South Australian representative. At the time this was the most senior games of Australian rules football played by an individual and in recognition of this achievement then Australian Prime Minister Bob Hawke wrote Ebert a letter congratulating the feat. At least one compilation of Australian football statistics estimated this to be the seventh highest tally in top-level senior football. After finishing his playing career at Port Adelaide in 1985, Ebert remained coach for a further two seasons. Ebert started the 1986 Sample season without star wingman Craig Bradley who had been acquired by Carlton. At the end of 1987, after failing to win a final for three consecutive seasons, Ebert was replaced as coach of Port Adelaide by John Cahill for the 1988 Sample season. Although the three seasons preceding Ebert's dismissal at the end of 1987 as coach were ultimately unsuccessful, he is credited with blooding a large number of champions that helped propel the club into the Australian Football League. Ebert took up coaching Woodville after ending his coaching tenure at Port Adelaide for John Cahill's return. Ebert coached Woodville for three years. In his first season as coach of Woodville, the club won the 1988 Escort Cup defeating Port Adelaide in the final in front of 31,210 at Football Park. The 1988 Escort Cup was the only piece of silverware that the Woodville Football Club ever won. Woodville merged with West Torrens at the end of the 1990 Sample season. Ebert coached South Australia to memorable wins over Western Australia in 1996 and 1998. Ebert was a strong-bodied player whose physical build and stamina allowed him to dominate football matches. With a high skill level, errors were rare, and his ability to hit teammates with accurate, spearing passes made him very effective in attacking roles. Ebert was able to win his own ball and could quickly handball effectively under pressure. Gordon Schwartz, football journalist described Russell Ebert as a perfect example to the younger generation. On field he maintains expressionless concentration, never indulges in tantrums, and plays with great intensity and energy, few. Players of his ability are as industrious. He doesn't believe that his talent entitles him to rest on his laurels and let other people do most of the work. One of Ebert's sons, Brett, also played for Port Adelaide. Ebert's brothers Craig and Jeff also played for Port Adelaide in the Sandville. Ebert fathered three children, Tammy, Ben, and Brett. His son Brett and his nephew Brad Ebert have both played for Port Adelaide in the Sanfil and AFL. Brad Ebert's grandfather is Trevor Obst, and his great-grandfather is Ken Obst, both also played for Port Adelaide. Ebert died on November 5, 2021 at the age of 72 from acute myeloid leukemia. He was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia in late December 2020. A state funeral, attended by approximately 4,000 people, was held in his honor on November 16, 2021 at Albert and Oval. Upon confirmation of Ebert's death CEO of the AFL Gillen McLaughlin issued a statement concluding that the child in me will always admire the great footballer but the adult that I am is in. Awe of what Russell Ebert was as a man, and his loss after bravely confronting his illness is devastating for his family, for his club, his many fans and for the state of South Australia. Where he is given so much. He was everything you would hope to be in a man and perhaps the best of all of us, at the Glenelg Football Club Centenary Gala. Held after Ebert had passed away the audience paused to celebrate his career and the band played an excess song Never Tear Us Apart music in his honour. Ebert is widely held to be the greatest player to have played for the Port Adelaide Football Club. He was inducted into the Australian Football Hall of Fame in 1996 and is centre for Port Adelaide's greatest team. Ebert was the second and currently only one of four Australian rules footballers to have a statue at Adelaide Oval, with the other players being Barry Robrin, Malcolm Blight, and Ken Farmer. The Adelaide Advertiser, in recognition of Port Adelaide's 150th anniversary in 2020, selected the club's all-time top 150 players, from both the AFL and Sandville, and ranked Ebert at number one. In 2021 Ebert was recognised with legend status in the South Australian Sport Hall of Fame. Thanks for watching.